In today's video, I'd like to talk about telling apart Ukrainian and Russian soldiers on the battlefield. The first and most obvious way of doing this is of course by looking at their uniforms. It's worth noting that the predecessor to both the Russian and the Ukrainian armed forces was the Soviet Union's armed forces, and some of their uniform designs and indeed a lot of the equipment used by both is actually very much related and based on the late Soviet equipment and armed forces that were prevalent in both Ukraine and in Russia itself. Let's start by taking a look at the modern Ukrainian uniform. This version of the Ukrainian uniform was adopted in 2015, following the previous year Russia's annexation of Crimea and an ongoing war against Russian-backed separatists in the east of the country. It's called the M14 digital pattern, and the kit alongside the helmet is thought to be inspired indeed by British Army uniforms and is a break from the Soviet past, which the post-1991 army of Ukraine had largely been following along old Soviet lines in its design and makeup of the uniform and indeed of the helmet and equipment. The big teller between the Russian uniform and that of most Ukrainian troops is that the Russian uniform uses a different kind of camouflage called EMR. It's a Russian camouflage that was introduced in 2008 and generally to the eye it looks a lot greener whereas the Ukrainian camouflage looks a bit more dusty, a bit more of a yellow and olive a tan color. The Russian EMR uniform looks looks greener and has various shades of greens and browns. Another big difference is the helmets. Most Russian troops will be using some variation of the 6B helmet. The standard helmet for infantry is the 6B47. Some infantrymen will also be using the 6B27 helmet and the VDV and other special forces among the Russians will be using different types of helmets again, as will Ukrainian special forces troops. Nine times out of ten, this will be enough to determine whether a combatant is fighting for the Russians or for the Ukrainian side. Of course, bearing in mind that the Russians have on several occasions worn Ukrainian uniforms in order to infiltrate, and it's possible that Ukrainians might do something similar in the future, and therefore you should be aware of that. There are a few other caveats. Let's start first with the Russian side, because soldiers from the Russian Federation aren't alone fighting against the Ukrainians. As I mentioned in this video, there are also the so-called people's militias from these rebel republics that are pro-Russian, the Donetsk People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic. And these units are largely ragtag militias that have been armed and in some case equipped by the Russian state, but many of the soldiers in fact seem to be wearing older style Ukrainian uniforms and indeed some Soviet kit and equipment as well. On the Ukrainian side, we also have the fact that the Ukrainians, as alongside the regular forces, the armed forces, the naval forces, and the special operations forces, there's also the TDF, the Territorial Defense Forces, which in many cases aren't equipped and standardized quite as much as the regular forces, and so a lot of the time you'll just see guys with either just the pants or just the army jackets, rather than the entire kit, and so these obviously won't be to the same standard as the Ukrainian regular forces. This is on top of as well various militias that have sprung up in the wake of the Russian attack to fight back. Given that there is a bit of a mix and indeed overlap of uniforms on the battlefield, there's always step two to identification, which is armbands. Now armbands have become incredibly prevalent in this conflict and have actually been in use since 2014 in the Donbass region. Let's start by taking a look at armbands worn by the Ukrainian side. Now, they are very simple. They simply follow the colors of the Ukrainian flag. That is blue and yellow. And obviously, that's the Ukrainian flag. It makes sense that they would wear them. Now, the shades of these colors can vary. The yellow is normally incredibly bright because obviously it stands out on a dark uniform. But there has been some suggestion that the blue might be for volunteer troops, while the yellow is for regular soldiers. To distinguish between those who have more military training, so the regulars and the volunteers who have come up to do their service to fight against the Russians, but who perhaps aren't as sure and might need more assistance from regular soldiers. 
However, I did read another article because there have been some news agencies which reported on a story that said that while at the beginning of the war there were the yellow armbands, they switched to blue to stop Russian spy infiltration of special forces behind Ukrainian lines. I'm not sure how much sense that makes because surely now the Russians can just switch their armbands to blue if they are special forces working behind enemy lines and to me I've still seen a mix of both blue and yellow so I'm not sure if it means different things in different fronts for the Ukrainian soldiers or whether it's simply a case of getting your hands on yellow and blue to show that you're on the Ukrainian side. Now the reason why armbands are being worn by both the Ukrainian and the Russian side is mainly to stop friendly fire. It's easy identification, it can be seen from some distance and it stops incidents like that from occurring. Now the Russians use several different colours ranging from white to a kind of silver, which I believe is just duct tape around the arm, and also some red bands. Now, by far the most common of these is white, and this has actually been used by separatist troops in the east of Ukraine since 2014, the white being largely associated with Russia, and indeed with how the campaign is going in general. Now, while this is the most common one, I have also seen images and videos of Russian soldiers with more silver armbands, and indeed with red armbands bands as well. It's possible that the silver is simply meant to be white but it's what they had to hand at the time. Of course white and red are both colours that are on the Russian flag which may explain why they're being used there. There's also another type of armband that's sometimes worn by Russian and pro-Russian troops which is the St. George's ribbon which consists of black and orange bands. This goes back further into Russian history. It was indeed used to adorn medals during the Tsarist period and while it disappeared in the early Bolshevik regime, it came back in the Second World War to adorn Soviet medals there. It was also used in Putin's Russia, particularly for commemorating the Soviet past, which he has largely brought back, particularly World War II or Victory Day parades as they're called. And as such, they have become symbols of pro-Russian separatists in the east of Ukraine and indeed are still worn by certain troops, like these VDV troops who were trapped in a lift. Finally, we have the symbol. Now, these symbols are largely to identify Russian troops, and rather than being on troops themselves, they are mostly actually on vehicles that are being driven by Russian troops. There are a number of different symbols that we see, the most common being these six. Now, the first one and most famous one is the Z symbol, and while it was a lot of speculation about what these meant in the early days, we're fairly certain now that these refer to different areas where troops were stationed before, as well as various types of troops themselves. So the Z is believed to have been for the Eastern Military District. There, there is also a Z with a box around it. These were thought to be forces from Crimea. There was also a circle or an O. These were thought to be forces coming from Belarus. There was also a V, which was believed to stand for naval infantry. The X, which is assumed to be forces from Chechnya, so uh, Ramzan Kadyrov's Chechen forces, which I also made a video about. And finally, the A, which is Alpha Group or the Special Forces. Of these, the most famous and enduring of the symbols has got to be the Z. There was a lot of confusion about this because the Z doesn't actually appear in the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, and it's been worn by people to show their support for the Russian war effort, both within Russia and abroad, quite controversially so, with some people already comparing it to the National Socialist swastika and the use thereof. But that is it for now. Those are the ways that you can best tell apart Russian soldiers from Ukrainian soldiers in this current conflict. Let me know if you have any more information about the armbands, for example, and what these might symbolize for both sides, as well as other ways of telling them apart. One of the ways which some people assume would be a good way to tell them apart, language actually most of the time isn't because most people in Ukraine, I believe a majority, do actually speak Russian as a first language. And while there has been a fair amount of agitation, particularly recently with a lot of native Russian speakers saying they're going to switch to Ukrainian because of, of course, the politicization of their language use by many on the Russian side, it still appears that in most of the combat videos that I have seen of combat but in Ukraine, most Ukrainian soldiers are speaking Russian because that is simply the first language of most people in Ukraine. 
Anyway, let me know if you enjoyed this video, do subscribe if you like this kind of content and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I've been Hilbert and this has been The Very Current History.